The Bay of Pigs Invasion Background In 1959, Fidel Castro came to power in an armed revolt that overthrew Cuban dictator Fulgencio Batista. The US government distrusted Castro and was wary of his relationship with Nikita Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union. Before his inauguration, John F. Kennedy was briefed on a plan by the Central Intelligence Agency that was developed during the Eisenhower administration. The plan was to train 1,400 Cuban exiles for an invasion of their homeland. It hinged on the Cuban people and elements of the Cuban military, rising up against Castro and supporting the invasion. The ultimate goal was the eventual overthrow of Castro and the establishment of a non-communist government friendly to the United States. Training President Eisenhower approved the program in March 1960. The CIA set up training camps in Guatemala, and by November the operation had trained a small army for an assault landing and guerrilla warfare. José Miró Cardona led the anti-Castro Cuban exiles in the United States. He was a former member of Castro's government, but now the head of the Exile Committee, the Cuban Revolutionary Council. He was also poised to take over the provisional presidency of Cuba if the invasion succeeded. The upcoming invasion became common knowledge among Cuban exiles in Miami. Despite efforts of the government to keep the invasion plans covered, Cuban intelligence learned of the guerrilla training camps in Guatemala as early as October 1960, and the press reported widely on events as they unfolded. In February 1961, the newly inaugurated President Kennedy authorized the invasion plan. But, Kennedy was determined to disguise U.S. support of the operation. The landing point at the Bay of Pigs was part of the deception. The site was a remote swampy area on the southern coast of Cuba, where a night landing might bring a force ashore against little resistance and help to hide any U.S. involvement. Unfortunately, the landing site also left the invading force more than 80 miles from refuge in Cuba's Escombre Mountains, if anything went wrong. The plan. The original invasion plan called for two airstrikes against Cuban air bases. A 1,400-man invasion force would disembark under cover of darkness and launch a surprise attack. Paratroopers dropped in advance of the invasion would disrupt transportation and repel Cuban forces. Simultaneously, a smaller force would land on the east coast of Cuba to create confusion. The main force would advance across the island to Mantanzas and set up a defensive position. The United Revolutionary Front would send leaders from South Florida, and establish a provisional government. The success of the plan depended on the Cuban population joining the invaders. Invasion The first mishap occurred on April 15, 1961, when eight World War II-era B-26 bombers left Nicaragua to bomb Cuban airfields. They were painted them to look like Cuban Air Force planes. The bombers missed many of their targets and left most of Castro's Air Force intact. As news broke of the attack, photos of the repainted U.S. planes became public and revealed American support for the invasion. It was then that President Kennedy cancelled a second airstrike. On April 17, the exiles of Brigade 2506 landed at beaches along the Bay of Pigs and immediately came under heavy fire. Cuban planes strafed the invaders, sank two escort ships, 
and destroyed half of the Exile's air support. Bad weather hampered the ground force, which had to work with soggy equipment and insufficient ammunition. The counter-attack. Over the next 24 hours, Castro ordered roughly 20,000 troops to advance toward the beach, and the Cuban Air Force continued to control the skies. As the situation grew increasingly grim, President Kennedy authorized an air umbrella dawn on April 19. Six unmarked American fighter planes took off to help defend the brigade's B-26 aircraft flying. But the planes arrived an hour late, most likely confused by the change in time zones between Nicaragua and Cuba. They were shot down by the Cubans, and the invasion was crushed later that day. Some exiles escaped to the sea, while the rest were killed or rounded up and imprisoned by Castro's forces. Almost 1,200 members of Brigade 2506 surrendered, and more than 100 were killed. Aftermath The Brigade prisoners remained in captivity for 20 months, as the United States negotiated a deal with Fidel Castro. Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy made personal pleas for contributions from pharmaceutical companies and baby food manufacturers, and Castro eventually settled on $53 million worth of baby food and medicine in exchange for the prisoners. On December 23, 1962, just two months after the end of the Cuban Missile Crisis, a plane containing the first group of freed prisoners landed in the United States. A week later, on Saturday, December 29, surviving brigade members gathered for a ceremony in Miami's Orange Bowl, where the brigade's flag was handed over to President Kennedy. I can assure you, the President promised, that this flag will be returned to this brigade in a free Havana. The disaster at the Bay of Pigs had a lasting impact on the Kennedy administration. Determined to make up for the failed invasion, the administration initiated Operation Mongoose, a plan to sabotage and destabilize the Cuban government and economy, which included the possibility of assassinating Castro. 